Hello everyone, I'm back. Today we are going to review Combat Patrol Blood Angels. Why Blood Angels, you ask? Because you like jump packs, shock assault, and you like the cool space vampires, who are noble and artistic, but also can go full berserk on the enemy. What does full berserk mean, you asking? Well, first of all, when you are charging, you have plus one to your charge rolls. And after that, you have plus one attack, in the turn that you charge. And other than that, you have plus one to your wound rolls when you are charging. So that means your average guys can wound a Warlord Titan on a 5 plus even if they only have a pencil with them. Which is really awesome. Blood Angels Combat Patrol. The price is $150 or 120 euro or 90 pounds. The value inside the kit. 208 pounds if you want to use the Blood Angels upgrade spruce. If not, then it's 184 euros. Points wise. It should be around 455 or 485 points, depending on what you build. First of all, we have a really good HQ option, Primaris Librarian. It is 85 points or 105 points if you buy the upgrade. I will tell about the upgrade a little bit later. First of all, he's a Psyker, uh, some kind of a space wizard if you are not familiar with the lore. Rip of the Bandage Fast. If you are playing Blood Angels or Ultramarines, you have better option than him, but he is a really good starting option to get to know if you really like the space magic thing, psychic powers. The interesting thing is, the kit is not very customizable, you can only change between two heads, but at least you got one of the rare bearded ones, which are great in my opinion. But the character in-game is really customizable, you can change between psychic powers or spells, how you want to call them. You can make them an offensive good damage character or even a defensive support one. Which one do you prefer? In Blood Angels, because this is the Blood Angels kit, I will tell you, you can make him really mobile and really hard hitting. And let me tell you an awesome combo with this Librarian as Blood Angels. First of all, you have the Librarian. You cast Quickening and Wings of Sanguinius. What are these two do? Well, first of all, Wings of Sanguinius. Well, basically, it gives wings to your Librarian. He will be able to fly and move 12 instead of just 6. And quickening will make you fast. That means you can reroll your advance rolls and your charge rolls. But also you gain D3 more attacks. If you roll well on that D3, your librarian will have 9 attacks on the charge. With the possibility of doing 27 damage. Which is enough for taking down a knight around 500 points. Highly unlikely. But it can happen. But the librarians are still not good in melee. Tell it you floating vampire Jesus here. In other chapters, he's also able to dish out melee damage, sometimes even good melee damage, however, he is not so good at taking damage. All in all, he's a really good character to test out if you really like magic. In normal cases, he knows two psychic power and smite, able to cast two psychic powers and deny one. Denying means stopping the enemy's psychic power. As I mentioned, he can be 105 points, which means you purchase the upgrade Sheaf Librarian, which means he knows 3 psychic powers and smite, still able to cast only 2, but able to deny 2, which is a nice upgrade. All in all, I think he is one of the best options for Space Marine HQs. He is also able to defend as able to attack, which is good. The only downside, he has a little bit low mobility and no invulnerable saves. In this box set, you also have the Infiltrator's kit, but this time only 5 models, which is a little bit sad, however, at least this kit is the full kit, so you also have the option to build the Primaris Incursors. Primaris Infiltrators, they're average guys mostly, but they are not on the cheap end points wise, and it would be a problem, but they compensate you with many cool tricks, which boosts their survivability. Their guns are not so great, but they are kind of a semi-sniper rifle. When you roll a 6 to hit, it automatically wounds the target, so they have a better chance to wound tougher targets like tanks or knights. They have a 12-inch bubble around them called Omni Scrambles, which is good because your opponent can't drop next to them with reinforcements or can't arrive from the side of the board around them, which is good because they can only charge you if they are within 12 inches, so they can take away your objective instantly, 
and you deny the flamer weapons because most of the flamer weapons have a 12 inch range. So it's also a good thing. And the no charge aspect is good because you have a turn to get ready for a counter offensive or to pull your guys back if you don't need that objective. The other cool thing that they have is called Healy's Gauntlet, which I highly recommend. It's a cool gadget that works that way. The first damage that you take in every turn got reduced to zero. So make a save for you when you fail your saves. The other one is a comms unit that you can put one of the guys who is not the sergeant and when you have a Phobos captain or a Phobos lieutenant, you can use their real one aura from 24 inches instead of 6 inches. They have a cool ability called smoke grenade, for one comment point they can throw down a smoke grenade and it is harder to hit them, minus one to the hit rolls of the enemy. It's good, it's okay. They also have the Phobos keyword, which is good for some movement shenanigans, have the forward deployment and you can put them further away on the table. But let's check out the new guys. Primaris Incursors. First of all, I really like these guys. You get 5 models for 90 points. They are an excellent unit, cheaper than the infiltrators, almost the same, but they are more offensive, while the infiltrators are more defensive. They also have cool tricks, but different ones. First of all, they ignore any cover and ignore anything makes them hit worse, like smoke, forests, ruins. So hit good and stay that way. Nice. They have a better armor penetration in melee, which is great for the blood angels, space wolves. So these are the guys that you want push forward. Oh, on forward. They also have forward deployment, like the infiltrators, so you can put them further away on the table. They can also take a mine with them, which means if the enemy charges them, then on a roll of 2 plus, the mine blows up and deals D3 mortal wounds. If the charging enemy was a vehicle, then it deals flat 3 mortal wounds, which is really great. Remember, mortal wounds are those types of wounds that you cannot make an armor or an invulnerable saves against. I recommend you to build in cursors if you are planning to play melee based space marines like Blood Angels, Space Wolves, White Scars or Custom Chapter specializes in Assault. Let's check out the other two options that you get. Primaris Intercessors. 5 model, 90 points. Well, they are the most basic Space Marine unit. But they are not bad, even if they are, even if they are basic. They have better customization options than the Infiltrators or the Incursors. They are able to choose between 3 types of different guns. On a note, the whole unit has to have the same type of weapon, but for every 5 models you are able to add a grenade launcher into the squad, however you cannot add it into the sergeant's weapon. The sergeant is also able to have a cool melee weapon or a good pistol, or even both, but then you lose the main weapon. The 3 options that we have, Auto Bolter, it has the shortest range between these 3 options, but it has 3 shots, and you can fire it even after running, then you hit a little bit worse. But I think it's still the best option if you are planning to use these intercessors as shock assault troops. Bolt Rifle. It has a longer range and one point of armor penetration, which is nice. It normally has one shot, but if you are not moved or you are within half range, you have two shots. I prefer this weapon, because this one is the most versatile in my opinion. You can have it on a squad who is stand back and fire, or you can have it on a squad who is marches forward then they are also shooting too because they are within half range probably. And last, Stalker Pattern Bolter, it has the longest range and it deals 2 damage and it also has an armor penetration of 2, which is nice, but this weapon only has one shot and it's heavy, so if you move, you hit worse. I think it's only worth taking if you are planning to leave that squad on the backfield and shoot or you are planning to play Ultramarines. I think it's wise to take a melee weapon on your sergeant, the best options are the Chain Sword, the Power Sword or the Power Fist. You also got the option of a Thunder Hammer, but that one is not free, while the other three is. So I recommend you choose between those three. Before leaving, I think I should tell you a cool little trick. Well, in most cases you can throw one grenade in a shooting phase if you are not shooting with a weapon. But as I said, you can add a grenade launcher into this team. So that grenade launcher is not a grenade. It's an assault weapon, so if you add a grenade launcher into this kit, you can throw two grenades, not just one. Although the rocket launcher one go five times further than the normal grenade. Let's go to the elite option, aggressors. Three models, 90 points. I really like these models, 
but they have some issues. They are chunky, which is nice. They are more tankier than normal Space Marines. They have one more wound. They have better toughness, toughness 5. They have these two weapon options integrated into their gauntlets. You can choose between these two. One of them is a flamer and one of them is a bolter. The difference between these two weapon options, while the bolter has better range and fix 3 shots per gauntlet, then the flamer has shorter range and between 1 and 6 shots each hand, it automatically hits the target. And you can also add a frag launcher to their backs, which has the same profile as the bolter, but with d6 shots and blast. Blast means it hits more times against hordes, but you cannot shoot it in melee. You cannot shoot in melee either, so it doesn't mean anything in this case, just hitting better against hordes. I prefer the Bloodstorm Gauntlet, because then all of the weapons have the same profile and can shoot the same target. Meanwhile, if you take the Flamestorm Gauntlet, maybe you are not in range with your Flamers. You can only shoot your Fragstorm Launcher, but if you are planning to play Salamanders, then the Flamestorm Gauntlet is really good for you. All the unit options were great in this box set, but I think probably this is the best one. Impulsor. One model and it 100 points. It's a transport which can transport up to 6 person. This is one of the few vehicle options that let you disembark after you moved and unleash hell exactly where you need it. It has many weapon options and some of them are really good and interesting. Let's check out the first one which is almost integrated in the hull. You can change them but I would not recommend it's really good in its normal state. Two storm bolters, eight normal bolter shot and that's it. Good, efficient, okay nice. Other than that you can add the heavy stubber which is four more bolter like shots but with a little armor penetration for free obviously why not. And you can choose between some options. One of them is a shield which gives a 5 plus invulnerable save to the impulsor. The other one is a rocket launcher, versatile weapon which is somewhat good against tanks, somewhat good against infantry, so it's all in all nice. The other options are not not the very best in my opinion, one of them is Cullen Orbital Bombardment, once a game, which in most cases it's not good, unless your opponent is really stacked in one place. I would choose between the shield or the rocket launcher. I would give this an overall score of 8 out of 10. This is one of the best combat patrol boxes for Space Marines. Not just Blood Angels, it's good for every chapter. This box set is just generally good. If you are planning to start Space Marines, I recommend this box set.